Um, I have a video of Michael Irving that was... Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. Damn. Ow. That hurt. <laughs> Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Oh, boy. I'd say good morning, people, but it's not. It is actually 1230. Good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here for my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's had a great week. Um, we got back about 8.30 last night from a 11-hour drive from Vermont, uh, giving back and helping to get people back in their homes. And I came back with a bit of a cold, did my fireside chat, went to bed, and I've been knocked the F out. In fact, I couldn't believe it. It was 11.30 when my phone rang and woke me up, and I was like, I can't believe it's 11.30. This may be the latest I have slept in four ever but i ain't mad at it um actually i think it's needed i've been going a thousand miles an hour and sometimes you have to listen to your body so the dallas cowboys are in day number three of otas without cdm without micah parsons both of them looking for a contract and then we have dak prescott who has been paid before and is now up to be paid again the cowboys are in a unique position because very rarely do you have quarterbacks that you look at and say, we need to pay them another time that he's played that good. Um, some of you will say he's a bum, get rid of him and take Trey Lance. And here's where it gets interesting because we're hearing the praises of Trey Lance. Mike McCarthy is talking about how Trey Lance, they've trained some, changed some of his mechanics where he's able to now speed up the delivery of the football and that he's picking up things really, really well. And it's sounding like he all of a sudden is Steve Young. And I ask, um, and I'm not saying that these things aren't happening. I'm hoping that they are because <coughs> at some point you are always going to need the next guy. You don't move on from one quarterback without having another one that you believe in. Kansas City had Alex Smith, but they got Pat Mahomes and had him ride the bench a year and learn. And when they were confident that he was the guy, they moved on from Alex Smith. And you see what that's done from him. Very rarely do you move on from a guy and you don't have somebody else to take their place, like, say, Minnesota, although they were in a position to try and draft one, but I'm not sure that that's going to be the case. But the question I have here is, is this the Cowboys doing what Jimmy Johnson did years ago? And I even mentioned this before um, a few months ago, because if you'll remember back in 1989, when the Dallas Cowboys were coming off of the 1-15 season, having spent the number one pick on Troy Aikman, they also had Steve Walsh. Steve Walsh, Jimmy Johnson had you thinking that there was a uh, actually a battle for the starting quarterback position, that Steve Walsh was better than Troy Aikman, and had everybody believing that Steve Walsh was going to be the Dallas Cowboys quarterback. And people, of course, in the NFL, which is a quarterback-hungry league because there are very few of them, New Orleans traded for him, giving them a first, I believe a second, and a third round draft pick, which helped the Dallas Cowboys become the juggernaut that they were in the 90s. And this was basically a sales job. He had a decent season with New Orleans the first year, but basically was a journeyman quarterback. And so now Dak Prescott has stirred up a little bit of a controversy. <coughs> Forgive me. With his comments about I don't play for money. Let's listen to this real quick. It was last year when Mike was taking over the play calling and doing a few different things. How, how is it different for you right now? Yeah, it's very different. Uh, just in the fact of understanding uh, the way that we're going to attack, the way that he wants to call games, uh, the way that he sees the defenses, the way that he sees um, sees football, really. And uh, 
And honestly, a year into it, um, as I told you guys last year, we was thankful for him. We see the game the same. And uh, now it's about just uh, advancing that, advancing the, the, the knowledge of the system and really getting it into the, the game play, game scenario situations and making sure everybody's in tune uh, to those situations and really taking the next, uh, the next step and getting it to a 1500 level. Of course, how, I guess you say. How important is that to be able to be in review stage right now as far as it helping you guys get off to a fast start in September? Yeah, it's big. And not only that, us being uh, being ahead, it's about getting these younger guys up to our speed so we can make sure that we hit training camp with everybody taking that next step to make sure, as you said, when we hit the fall and we hit game one, that we're full speed, um, that there's not the development period, I guess you could say, that we had last year, right? Uh, I think Coach can attest to that as we both did, right? Figuring out the way that this team was going to be, the way that the offense, the way we we're going to call things is we can go into it with a sense of a sense of our identity and uh, the way that we're going to be aggressive and attack people. Do you miss having CD here? Uh, yes. I mean, that's that's my guy. Um, not not m much, not many m more people out there, more swaggier, cooler, better player uh, than that guy. So obviously you're going to miss him, miss having him around. Um, but I've been in this situation. It's business, business is business. Um, he's got my support and pretty much everybody in this locker room. I mean, I know locker room support, and so that's uh, it's part of it. Um, hopefully he'll get all this and, and everything he's deserve uh, deserves and is worth. What's the status of your business, talking about business? With the business is business. I'll leave it where it gets handled. Um, right now it's about being my best for this team right mm -hmm. now in this moment. OTA is helping these guys out uh, and, and just focused on that. And um, I know my business will take care of itself, and so... Been in and been in it before, experienced, and just uh, controlling what I can right now. Why have you been able to be so patient when when it comes to the business? I don't play for money. Never have, never cared for it. To be honest with you, um, yeah, would give it up just to just to play this game. So I, uh, yeah, um, so so I allow that to to the business people to to uh, say say what it's worth, um, what 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 they're supposed to give a quarterback of my play. Um, a person of my play, leader of my play, I guess you can say. And for me, it's about, as I said, control. I can control and handle that part, and the rest will take care of itself. Jack, earlier in your career, you wow. talked about Travis Frederick and the way he helped you when you were breaking in. Now with Cooper coming and BB coming in and pre-snap pre protections, all that, how can you help him with all the pre-snap stuff? Yeah, I mean, um, just communicating, right? Communicating, understanding, get, making sure that he understands he has a voice uh, and, and really challenging him and not just him, all those young guys. As I just said, it's about all those young guys getting up to the uh, to our level, to understanding uh, what this offense is about, to make sure as we get in the training camp, like I said, that, that we can explode. So um, Brock's done a great job. Cooper's done a great job. Dakota, um, every, every single one of those guys. TJ Bass, whoever needs to step in, who's played in that position, who's had reps in that position. Um, is picking it up, and that's really credit to our coaches, Shadi, Solari, um, all those guys, and installing, and um, they're they're ahead of it. So I, I don't know if he he's going to need quite the the intro that Trav gave gave me. Um, so uh, he's ahead; they're all ahead. Going back to what you were saying about a business, a lot of times some guys so sometimes guys get upset and go like, "Well, it's a matter of respect." Can do you draw that line and go? Business isn't about respect. Business is something else, or is that? Or does respect come in there some because that's where sometimes guys get crossways with, with yeah I think it just depends I think it depends on person relationships and honestly position and, and how much that pay can affect others understanding where I am what my pay means to a team to an organization um, I don't really take things personal uh, maybe maybe in my in my first deal right things were a little little different than they are now and that's uh, one my age one of who I am where I am in my life and um, I guess the fact that that first deal got done, uh, the understanding that at this point, um, I have a lot of decision in this too. I have a lot of say so too. So um, it's about understanding business is business. And for me, as I said, it's controlling what I can and that's making sure I'm the best player that I can be right now. There you go. And of course, you know that this is where Stephen A. Smith is already making fun of this and that and the other. So, well, you know, Dak Prescott, he's not gotten paid. Well, in the grand scheme of things, when you think about the first four years when he played and he only made $4 million, and, you know, they'll go through and they'll tell you that, you know, this quarterback's gotten this much, this much, this much, and they've been to Super Bowls. But there's a lot of guys out there that ain't even been to the playoffs that are making big money. And it's not a matter of, and, and what his point being here is, you know, I don't play this because of the money. Um, it's great to have the money and stuff, but I'm a gym rat. I'm going to play football regardless of it, to a point. Now, 
what he's saying is, is I'm not necessarily looking to be the highest paid. I want to be paid what is due this position. There's nobody that's going to go out here. Let's be real with it. There's nobody going to go out here and risk their neck, do the things that they do to be on the field and taking the abuse and everything else for free. There's nobody out there. And this whole thing that Dak Prescott, for whatever reason, that Dak Prescott is the only player in the NFL that's supposed to offer a discount is crazy. Sorry. It just is. But, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. I'm going to get the emails that say, you're just a Dak lover and you're just looking out for Dak. Well, Tua is not looking and saying, I'll play for free. He's rejected offers that are below Jared Goff's. If you're Trevor Lawrence, you're looking at and saying, I want to be up there with Jared Goff as well. There's nobody out here who's taking a discount to play quarterback in the NFL. And so at some point, you have to pay what you owe. All right, good people, as always, I appreciate you guys. Um, I'm working my way to get back on track here. I think I'm going to make some um, Thai noodles, something nice and spicy and warm for my throat to try and get my voice back in things. And probably going to take me a nap because I am exhausted. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you guys, and I'll see you soon. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, <coughs> commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. <laughs>